the far-right national security minister, Ichima Bengvir, <clears throat> is appearing to be under pressure since taking office last month. It's amidst a string of high-profile violent crime and Palestinian terror attacks. Now, for decades, he appeared at all the major incidents, often heckling the government minister of the time. But now the tables are turned with Bengvir himself, the target of the public's frustration with what's been framed as, by some at least, as a lack of protection provided by security forces. And in an apparent display of the building pressure, the Jewish Power Party leader spoke to local Channel 12 News, warning that if he was not able to influence the government on the, to adopt his policies within three months, that he'd leave it, even if it means bringing down the coalition. So again, just an indicator of the pressures building on this new far-right member of the government here with an influential position. But to discuss this more in depth and some of the planned moves by the new national security minister, first we're joined by Samar Sinjalawi, Fatah activist from Jerusalem, the chairman of the Jerusalem Development Fund. Um, thanks for being with us again, Samar. I appreciate your time as always here. And we uh, may, be, may be joined soon by uh, an, uh, another member to discuss this. Look, first of all, uh, among the moves approved so far by Bengvir, the new national security minister, includes in the near term raising a building in East Jerusalem, deemed illegal by Israeli authorities, but with some 100 residents in it now, I think it's set to happen even this week, a huge police contingency. What's the story there, Summer? How will the Palestinian arena react? Well, uh, David, first of all, we should not take pick up this incident and discuss it alone. We should discuss this issue, this uh, threat to demolish uh, uh, a building that have 100 Palestinian inhabitants inside it, within the general uh, background, within the consequences of, of events. First of all, you should know that uh, Palestinians in East Jerusalem are deprived of any means of support in the housing sector. Uh, there is no planning for housing units for Palestinians. There are no permits provided for Palestinians to build their own uh, housing sector. I will give you an example. In 19... In, in 2019, for, uh, as an example, the, uh, the uh, municipality of Jerusalem issued around 58,000 permits units. Uh, only less than 1,000 were for Palestinians. Uh, and they are 40% of, of the inhabitants of, of the city. Uh, everything in Jerusalem is acting against Palestinians uh, at the level of the Knesset. All, all the legislation, including the Kaminets law that is restricting the buildings for Palestinians and that is also restricting their ability to take any legal recourse against any demolitions uh, that is affecting uh, for them. And if you uh, know that any Palestinian who decides to move his address and go and live outside of the city will lose his permanent uh, status uh, residency uh, right, so where should the Palestinians live if they are not allowed to build, if they are not allowed to move outside of the city? What should they do? The only <clears throat> option that is left for Palestinians is to build uh, illegally. <laughs> and then the, the reaction of the governments is demolishing their houses. There are four different uh, uh, governmental agencies that are enforcing the building uh, law inside Jerusalem, unlike uh, all other cities in Israel, or in all other cities in Israel, it's only the municipality. Summer, in Jerusalem, wanna, there are four bring different in, We have another member of the conversation here. This, uh, I, I certainly this. sympathize with the complexities around anything building in Jerusalem, certainly when it comes to east and west. But hold on, I want to introduce here Yishai Fleischer. He's a longtime spokesperson for the uh, Hebron uh, Jewish community out there in Hebron, but also now an advisor to the national security, uh, minister of national security, that is Itamar Ben-Gvir. So thanks for being with us, Yishai. Um, look, is this, I don't know if you heard or much, I know you just joined us, how much you caught of, of Summer's comments, the concerns around this pending demolition in East Jerusalem. You know, is this the time for, for raising decrepit apartment buildings in, in Flashpoint, East Jerusalem, that, as far as I know, are currently not drawing any national attention? You know, wh where's the sensitivity around that? Is there, you know, any sensitivity from this ministry towards the wider conflict? First thing, it's nice to see my friend Samer, and it's good to hear him. Uh, with regarding to uh, this particular case, I'm a little bit surprised at Samer because the guy that uh, whose house is about to be demolished, this is the second time that he's built illegally. He built also in Silwan illegally. And back then he stole from fellow Arabs. And also now we're talking about area that was zoned for public usage for the Arab world over there, for the schools, for the parks. So this guy, a criminal dude, 
went and stole land from his fellow Arabs. That's supposed to be zoned for public usage, for like a park or a kindergarten. He stole this land. He's already been proven a criminal beforehand. Now his house is going to be destroyed for the good of the Arabs of Eastern Jerusalem. And yet Samer uh, sadly uh, presents it as an Israel versus versus a Palestinian conflict, when in fact it is uh, an intra-Arab problem. And we get turned to all the time by fellow Arabs saying, hey, my neighbor is acting criminally. Can you help me? Now, what you asked whether this is the right time or not, it's a police action that is sanctioned by the court. Is the court that decided to do these things. You know, the very same court that we're always discussing on other issues. The court said, not not Minister ben Gvir, the court said, yes, it's time to demolish this house. The police want to do it because the police's job is to fight illegal actions. It's the, it's its job is to uh, uh, create a lawful society, uh, law-abiding society. And so, yes, illegal housing, stealing from other Arabs is in, in, illegal and will be taken down. Now, this government, the only difference is that this government wants to make sure that uh, that we don't like bypass these decisions of the court. We don't kind of tell the police, we'll say, you know, maybe it's not the right time. That kind of language okay. I used before. No, yeah. it's the right time right now to fight illegal, uh, illegal actions on the ground and to create law and order for Jews and Arabs in that area. Samra, I want to come right back to you here and, and stay with Minister Bengvir here. I mean, I recently, you know, shut down things like pita bakeries in Israel's security prisons, housing Palestinians now, making a major push now for the death penalty for convicted terrorists. You know, your thoughts on this too, Samer? Well, Ben Gvir uh, is famous in lighting fires. Uh, this is how he has been elected, in uh, showing himself that he is very anti-Palestinian, in showing himself that he is extreme uh, right-wing uh, activist. Uh, I think he is uh, now planning uh, for the coming election in 2027. He wants the premiership. He believes he can achieve this. He has been able to swallow merits while he has been in the opposition. And now, in four years in, in, in power, in government, he, he's trying to swallow the Likud. Uh, unfortunately, whatever he does, he's touching nerves, and he knows that these nerves are going to have escalations. And he doesn't matter. He doesn't care about risking hundreds of uh, civilians from the Palestinian side, the lives of civilians from Palestinian and Israeli sides, because he knows the consequences with what he's doing. Uh, I, I, uh, I really wonder how low will the Israeli politics go down the street in seeing people who have been supporting terror and even con convicted in, in, uh, in terrorism in the past in leading, min in leading ministerial uh, position. Uh, yesterday, uh, there was a, uh, an activist, uh, Zvi Sokot, who has entered to the Knesset uh, according to the Norwegian law. This guy has been arrested in 2010 for terror against Palestinians. He was deported by the Israeli security in 2012 uh, from the West Bank because of acts of terror against Palestinians. And he has demonstration. He has organized a demonstration in 2015 in Tel Aviv in support to Jewish terrorists who have burned uh, life, a family, the family of Dawabshe in the in the village of Duma. So this, Some, this Summer, is I the kind of, a of the to respond here. Israeli I'm going to hold on to both of you through the break here. The I want to hear, hold on both of you through the break. We're coming up about a minute left here. Uh, Ishaya, your reaction to some of this here. Well, I think that Mr. Ben Kvir is a man who is a scary and destabilizing to the jihad. If you're a jihadist and you want to destroy Israel and you call for the erasure of Israel, if you sell maps with a picture of uh, the borders of the land of Israel, but it has the word Palestine on it, if you plan on terrorism, or if you've been caught doing terrorism or murdering Jews, but now you're sitting in jail getting a degree and also baking your pitas, and suddenly comes a minister who's elected by the people and says, hey, 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 we are not going to allow criminals like murderers to be baking their own pita and living the high life in Israeli prisons. We will not let criminality go forward. Forward, and we will not be a, a, a party to uh, allowing Bedouins uh, to extract money from businesses and protection rackets or women to feel unsafe walking in the streets of Beersheba or Yafu or Akko. No, there's a new sheriff in town. That sheriff wants what the people want, which is law and order, and the jihad is on the run. And by the way, it is not surprising that Arab mayors of many Arab towns have already spoken out saying, we want Ben Gvir to succeed. Every you Palestinian that I meet says to me, I want Ben Gvir to succeed. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Order. Both of you want to continue the conversation, we'll be right back. Short break, we'll be right back here. 
Now we're, joined, we're continuing our debate here, joined by Samar Sinjilawi Fatah, activist from Jerusalem, chairman of the Jerusalem Development Fund, and also Yishai Fleischer, longtime international spokesperson for the Jewish community of Hebron, and now a, an advisor to the National Security Minister, Itamar Bengvir. Thank you both for staying with me through the break here. I want to continue this discussion. Uh, Yishai, I want to come back to you, you know, this uh, interview or the, the statements made by, by Bengvir now about a somewhat of, like almost an ultimatum, three months to see his policies move forward or that he may take down the coalition. Are we such a, you know, do we buy that bluster? I mean, is he serious? What does he mean there? Look, I think I think in uh, in this interview, uh, I think what's important is to focus on public security. The game of politics, the Israeli game of politics, has its own uh, you know mechanisms and its own power plays and, and that whole thing. I think what people voted Itamar Ben Gvir uh, to do is to give them basic security back on our roads. But it's those security policies. I mean, that's buses. what he's talking about. He wants to see those things move forward. Death penalty for terrorists. That's right. That's because, national because, security and I, force. And I can tell you from. Yeah. from from being close to the minister, I've seen this over and over again. He's not joking around. In his mind, he has to fulfill the will of the people, and that is to bring back basic security. Sometimes when we watch, you know, I-24 out in uh, America or wherever we're watching it, we think that Israel is just a strong country around here and it's got it all under under control. But that's a fallacy. We have no-go zones in Jerusalem. We've got rockets trained at us from Hamas and from Hezbollah. Uh, we've got training uh, of young people, of Arab young minds, to hate Israel to to call to destroy Israel. And so that's the reality that we live with. That's what we face in our capital city, Jerusalem, and certainly in Judea and Samaria, and everywhere in the mixed Arab cities like Lod, Ramle, Beersheba, uh, Yafo, Akko, all these places. And so, so we want law and order back. That's why we uh, voted this kind of government in. And it's really an overwhelming, you know, for, for Israeli politics, it was an overwhelming victory. And now it's time to fulfill those promises to the people. And you saw videos in the last week of people complaining bitterly yeah. uh, after the rape uh, and and theft uh, of an Israeli citizen. And it's just like Itamar, they say, Ben Gvir, give us our security back, fund the police, uh, uh, strengthen it, G give them the right to push back against those enemies uh, that are making life impossible. And very important for me to say this over and over again, mm. the Arab community is turning also to Minister Ben Gvir and saying to him, help us, help us get rid of illegal weapons, help us get rid of the uh, of the suppression of the, of the corruption that we have in our towns here. And that's why mayors have been publicly standing up and saying, our Arab mayors have been publicly standing up and saying, we want Ben Gvir to succeed. Sabra, I want to throw a different sort of angle at you here, and feel free to respond. But look, thousands of Palestinians enter Israel each day, you know, whether from the West Bank or Gaza, to work. You know, the Israeli government effort's still there from the top down to sort of ease the economic desperation or hardship from, from snowballing in the Palestinian communities, despite existing threats. You know, we just highlighted that in our Ariel story earlier. Is this aspect of the relationship, how critical is it right now to preventing wider unrest, Sama? Allow me, David, just to have a quick yeah, comment on yeah. the prisoners' uh, conditions. Uh, I, I couldn't speak after uh, Rabbi Fischer sure. mentioned. But, well, uh, I would like to ask what are the conditions that are the Israeli terrorists who have killed, uh, burned Muhammad Abu Khadir in Shafat in life and killed him, who burned the Dawakshi family in, in Duma. What are the conditions they are living in? Are they are getting similar treatment to the Palestinian prisoners, or they are getting a lot of other privileges, and, and Itamar ben Gvir just really don't, doesn't care about uh, how they live and what privileges they are getting inside the Israeli jail. What is Ima, uh, uh, Igal Amir kind of privileges he's getting in, inside the prison? I will not be surprised he's going to be released soon, that he's going to be on the list of Itamar ben Gvir or Smodrich to the next, the coming Knesset, and maybe, maybe the Senate of, of Rabin will be a minister again. This is how low the Israeli political system is going down, and nobody is noticing how racist, how uh, discriminative against Palestinians and against Arabs in general. And we need, we need to stop this. My question to uh, Rabbi Fleischer, is there occupation in, 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 in the West Bank or no? And if, if there is no occupation, are Palestinians getting uh, equal rights to, to Jews or no? And if you, both your answers are no, is this apartheid or not? We need to face the reality. Is, is some some uh, arrangements of allowing Palestinians to work in Israel certainly will have a, a positive impact. Certainly, this outcome is needed for lots of families in, in, in Gaza. But this is not the solution for the security threats against Israelis. Mm -hmm. Israelis need to know that General X in the Palestinian society and General Z 
those youngsters who have been born in the mid uh, 95s the 90s and yeah. and and the early of this century they have lost hope of any good future they have nothing to lose and that's why there are a lot of lonely wolves yeah. people who woke up in the in the morning at the age of 14 or 19 take up a gun and shoot Jews because they lost any kind of hope we need to tackle the problem from its roots and try to find a solution for this we cannot keep uh, ignoring the main problem the elephant in the room is the occupation it's the injustice against palestinians yes there are hatred but hatred is equally among our generation both sides do you think that the uh, israeli youngsters love palestinians we we can see the march each year in jerusalem in may uh, where these youngsters are chanting death to arabs hatred is there and we need to fight it and we can fight it only if we can bring justice equal rights to Palestinians, either at the level of self-determination or equal Summer, rights wanna, within Israel. In the interest of time, uh, Yishai, I'll give you a chance to respond here. Just uh, about two minutes, a little under, please. No problem. I uh, appreciate the, the opportunity. Look, I think that Summer is kind of, uh, you know, weaving a false narrative uh, because uh, he's saying that we got to get to the root of the problem. He's right about that. But it's not about occupation. It's about jihad. And if you read the, the wills of the terrorists, they all say the same thing. Allah is great. We're going to destroy Israel. Palestine is ours forever. You know, we're part of the great jihad. So they don't say we want equal rights or anything like that. And that's the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is that, and I, by the way, I have Palestinian and Fatah TV at home. I watch it. I only need to watch about three minutes to know that this is 24 7 of, of brainwashing, of hate. They don't talk about rights. They don't talk about equalities, all these things that Samir says for the Western, you know, ear to hear. No, they talk about jihad, destroying Israel and revolution and and then Tel Aviv will burn and that kind of stuff. They're not looking for equal rights. By the way, there is not one Palestinian map that shows two states living equally side by side. They they want to take over all of Israel. All you have to do is like go to the store, any Arab store, they sell these little, you know, Palestine keychains. It's all of the state of Israel. So you have to be an idiot not to understand that they want the whole thing. And so uh, that the jihadist elements, not all Palestinians, because there are many Palestinians who are not like what Simon was saying, who want actually to live under Israel with upward mobility, with opportunity, and they hate the Fatah that, that Sama represents. They hate uh, uh, the this uh, dictator that they have ruling now, uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, who's, uh, who's nothing but a corrupt thug and has this secret police and steals all their money and, and brainwashes their kids. So that's what they want. They want off. They tell me all the time, just give us blue identity cards, i.e. Israeli residency, get these bastards off of us. That's what they want. Get these get these thugs off of our of our neck. And I'm sorry, my friend Samir gets a, get, makes a living off of the Fatah, but the Fatah steals money uh, from the Palestinian people and then has the audacity to come on I-24 and tell everybody that they're fighting for equality and human rights. They are not. They are not the people of human rights. They're the people of torture and corruption. And so the Palestinians want a real life. That life is going to be under Israel when it liberates them uh, from the Palestinian Authority uh, and from these Type of people and gives them an opportunity for a real life in the most liberal and best country in the Middle East, which is Israel. Yishai, thank you. It's tough to stop this conversation any way or shape or form. But Summer, uh, one minute if you'd like to re reply here. Well, I don't make living out of Fatah. I am opposition in Fatah. I'm opposing Arafat, Abbas. I want democracy. I want a, a more transparent and representative system in the Palestinian side. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, you need to face the reality, uh, Felicia. You cannot continue this narrative. It will not lead you anywhere. You need to admit that the Palestinians have equal rights to Jews in this country. There are 7 million Jews and 7 million Israelis. And we have to admit that we have both historical rights in this, in this uh, land. And we need, based on this common history, find a common future. Uh, uh, no way. The occupation can continue. It's okay. it's not only unacceptable. Summer, it's summer also and, and you shot both of you. This is obviously a discussion we can carry on for days and days. I appreciate you both, uh, especially with the undertone. I think you're both bringing uh, of coexistence here, of finding a way to live together here and doing what's best for everyone around here. So I appreciate you both joining. Yishai Fleischer, Samer Sinjalawi. Fascinating discussion, and and truly, uh, we're sure these issues will keep coming. We'll we'll bring you back. Thanks for joining today.